know what we we're talking all about metabolic syndrome, but there are lots of, uh, of other uh, ways to describe this. You know, menopause, menopause, menopause. Some considered a midlife crisis. That's usually when you should grab these males. When they start buying these red Corvettes. That's when they're starting to lose it. So you want to, because the the drug company would like us to think it's a Viagra or Cialis deficiency. And they sell a lot of this, and it's expensive, and it's a billion dollar, multi billion dollar industry. What's that? They buy the docs buy the government. I drive a Prius. Now, if you ask the males if they have night sweats and hot flashes, oftentimes they'll tell you they do, but they won't volunteer that information because that's a and I can tell you, I had night sweats in spades when I was 50. Now, my shirt was drenched. This was before I got into complementary medicine. So I just, as a pathologist, I figured I had a fever of unknown origin. I was probably going to die of a coma. So I just went about my life and didn't say much to anybody. But that, man, it was amazing. Now I understand. Hot flashes, night sweats. Of course, decreased flexibility. They'll complain of that sometimes. Loss of muscle mass. Who do you see at the 24-hour fitness or whatever club you go to? You know, the old guys are out there trying to get that muscle in this crowd. And many of them will because there's a lot of testosterone on the equipment. We, we actually test an 11-year-old boy who was going with his dad to the gym. The 11-year-old boy had this astronomical testosterone. Starting to show some precocious beauty. And it had the only, the only, the, his dad was, was not on testosterone. Not on top of might have been injected, but didn't have any exposure from his immediate family. But going to the gym and not wearing gloves on the foot uh, raises testosterone. Weight gain is a waste. Here we are. Reduced libido. That burned out feeling. And I put ED at the bottom because of all the symptoms. You know, ED will get them into you, but they've got much more going on. Than just things. Everything's fine. There's plenty of insulin. There's plenty of glucose. Just the right amount, and the cells functioning nicely. The membrane is nice and fluid. With metabolic syndrome, the membrane changes and becomes rigid. The receptors don't work. There's so much insulin, so much insulin is needed to drive glucose into the cell. There's more insulin in the cell. There's more glucose in the cell. It needs to be like glasses. The cell doesn't function. So just at a cellular level, you, you can imagine. This man was 84 at the time of this picture. 84. That was a couple years ago. I haven't updated that. That looks pretty good for 84. If I look like that at 84, I'd be good. Staying healthy, staying anabolic. And uh, testosterone's been studied and used since 1939, even before there was an FDA. Mainly, your pants are way ahead of themselves. Again, the tip of the iceberg. So Male comes into you, they're gaining weight, they got some blood pressure issues, they measure their glucose, measure their insulin if you want to. I don't routinely do that, but you can if you really want to nail the diagnosis. The baseline level of greater than 10, fasting insulin level is diagnostic. If it's less than 10, don't go away from the diagnosis. It may be, you may have to do a, an insulin challenge and see if the insulin level is five times greater than baseline in two hours. That's another way to nail the diagnosis. I just use it. I use symptoms, and I really live with the diagnosis. So I rarely measure an insulin. I look at the fasting sugars. And a fasting sugar above 90, by my way of practicing, is an indication. So I get interested in treating the male. And 90%, uh, you know, excuse me, 80% of all non-cancerous diseases are associated with the acronym "dead on arrival" here: diabetes, obesity. Condition. And as a pathologist, I have to show you some gory stuff. That's a serious condition. You're going to be on dialysis for short life expectancy. Ten years, I think it's going to be higher than that. Now, does testosterone therapy increase the risk of prostate cancer? Well, I've already let the cat in the bag. The answer is no, and there's plenty of information to support them. Here's a, here's a study done by Dr. Uh, a review, actually, by Dr. Morgan Thaler and a colleague, 
Dr. Morgan Taylor Thomas, a new article. And uh, one of the uh, articles of the 27th he reviewed, they actually took healthy young men and gave them insulin, gave them testosterone, excuse me, gave young men, healthy young men testosterone to see if it would affect their prostate. It had no effect on their prostate. So testosterone is going to affect our prostate glands. Why not at age 20 when we have so much of it? So that's a bit of it. <laughs> a, there's, young men don't get prostate cancer. Old men get prostate cancer with big bellies and testosterone. That's the simple. And so they actually looked at that. Uh, here's another uh, reference by Dr. Morgan Thaler. High prevalence of biopsy detectable prostate cancer was identified in humans. Low total free testosterone hormones despite the examples. Uh, higher fasting insulin levels, hypertension, the prevalence of type B diabetes is associated with lethal prostate cancers. Here's a reference to what we also mentioned in the new article. And uh, metabolic syndrome predicts prostate cancer in the cohort population, population which follow for 27 years. Norwegians would do that. Socialized medicine to try to prevent disease rather than wait and spend all the money and die and cure them. So, if testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer, what does? So well, all evidence points to estrogen, just like breast cancer. And Dr. Lee recognized this. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Dr. Lee? Well, that's kind of sad. Less than half. I was hoping all of you would raise your hand. There was a time 10 years ago when everybody. But he passed away about say, seven, eight years ago. He did amazing work. And this monogram, I would highly recommend hormone balancing for men, which Dr. May not tell you about prostate health. He wrote mainly about women with breast cancer. He talked about premenopause, postmenopause. Any one of his books is excellent. If you haven't read one, I highly recommend it. But what he points out in this monogram is that the prostate gland comes from the same onlogger as the uterus as the fetus is developing. So we're all females at the time of development, right, ladies? So it's, yeah, yeah. But when the, when the white chromosome kicks in, the prostate gland is developed. So the prostate gland has the same receptor activity as the uterus. So it makes sense that estrogen stimulates in the atrium. We don't know that about the cycle, but it also stimulates the prostate as well. So Dr. Lee described uh, PG2 ratio for, for women. He also extrapolated them. So he, he would look at just from estradiol and saliva and he would look at the PG2 ratio. And he suggests ratio of HG2 to 203.